Nah, just kidding. Now that's the best sound in elevator music I ever heard. Once upon a time, Disney's television animation department was in full bloom, and thus gifted us with the Disney Afternoon. A two-hour block of all their hit syndicated shows stacked together every weekday from 1990 to 97. It is an animated gold mine that stimulates the human imagination, as animation should do. By the way, how's Disney's television reputation doing right now? Well, let's start off at the beginning, since it's a really good place to start, with the Gummy Bears. How is it created? You know, my kid really likes those Gummy Bear candies. Could you make a show about that? Meh. And by god, the animators they booked for this job pulled out all the stops here. Disney really pushed the envelope of what children's animation and television could do. So much that legitimately knocked Hanna-Barbera out of the park. By the way, Warner Brothers, your treatment of Hanna-Barbera hasn't been kind. At, like, all. I mean it. Besides craptacular live-action CGI movies, you barely use any characters at all. In fact, I have reason to believe that the only thing you wanted Hanna-Barbera to do was Scooby-Doo, and nothing else. Among its 65 episodes, it had good episode ideas, bad episode ideas, and those ideas you just want to see in Disney's current work. There's a specific episode idea that falls into the latter category because it involves a cute little fetish of mine. Guess what we'll be looking at this time? Ready Deep Dish! Ready as I'll ever be. We begin our story at the castle of Lady Vane, the show's resident, Magic of the Spell. She's preparing for a sorceress gathering at her house with two other sorceresses, with her hyena mooks doing all the dirty work, as per usual. <gasps> no! It can't be! A Ringo! This means that her eternal youth spell is wearing off. But don't worry. Once every century or so, it can be replenished by sapping an unsuspecting victim's youth and or life force. And let's say you were the unsuspecting victim. The poor loser Lady Vane finds in this episode. Once she's back to her beautiful self, it's over. Meanwhile at Gummy Glen, Sunny Gummy is out and about playing hide and seek. No one captures Sir Cubby's flag! Or capture the flag, yeah, that's cool. The two kids put up a fair fight, and ultimately, it's Sunny who takes the gold. Through a special trick we'll be seeing later in the episode. What's big and green and has 12 legs? I don't know what. I don't know either, but it's on your shoulder. Where? Where? <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, no fair. And she just made it up on the spot, didn't she? Yes. Yes, she did. Awesome. Cubby promptly gives chase, and Sunny bumps into Gusto. Hold it right there. Don't move a muscle. How impressionistic. How avant-garde. How aerobic. Oh, jeez. I know my mom's a child of the 80s, but come on. It's painfully obvious that an adult of the 80s wrote this script. Sunny offers to pose for one of Gusto's sculptures, but she's still too young. Gee, I wonder where this is going. After poking at bread dough and calling it art, 
Gusto asks the two male gummies to head out and find him some marble. Sunny wants to join the group, but can't because, again, she's too young. I'm sick and tired of being treated like a child! Gosh, I wonder if it leads where I think it leads. Sunny heads off into the woods where she encounters... Whoa! Lady Jane? Ew, what happened to you? Time moving forward, kiddo. Happens to all of us. Sunny escapes Lady Vane by a hair, no less. Oh, this is gonna suck. Sunny sneaks back into Gummy Glen, and then we get this scene. There she is, snug as a bug in a rug. I know you were disappointed Gruffy left you behind, but things always look different in the morning. There's always this sense of timelessness in a Disney show. An animated Disney show! It has wholesome family values, and a big old happy family to match, and you really feel the emotions of these characters. All I feel from, say, Sunny and It's a Chance, is that relying on a team flavor of a month is the most overused tactic in creating a show. Back with Lady Vane, she casts her spell. And the horror begins. Turn back the clock forevermore. With this hair, my youth restores. The spell, it's working. By tomorrow morning, I'll feel 50 years younger. Thanks to that gummy bear. Internet reviews cost money. Go to Patreon to give us that money. It'll go towards new projects, better equipment, and in some cases living expenses. Look, we're not as poor as you think, but we're still pretty broke. I have every figurine and playset in Disney Infinity, meaning we're finally primed and ready to do that review we've been talking about. Just prove that we're not talking to a brick wall by donating $5. Thank you and have a nice day. The next morning, Granny has been proven true, in that things always look different in the morning. Maybe it's my dress. I can barely squeeze into it. Perhaps the reason why you can barely squeeze into that dress is because of your breasts. What? Boobs. Tits. Yabos. You actually use the word YABOS. You should know this, Sonny. You should know something's up. Dude. Are you asking for intelligence in an 80s Disney show? Just look at these bozos! Don't tell me Grammy shrunk it in the wash. Come on, boss. They can't be that clue. She's been growing up before our eyes and we haven't even noticed. Boy, gum, you're right. And just yesterday she seemed like such a kid. Oh, yeah, you're right. Granny gives Sunny a dress that she wore when she was her apparent age, which will be rendered useless when Sunny goes above and beyond her age. Gruffy asks Sunny to do some decorating and she happily obliges. Those blue flowers look great! Thank you, Sunny. But what color should we paint the ones on the mirror? Mm, how about russet and yellow like my dress? Here, I'll show you how it looks. Cubby asks Sunny to play, but her response is obvious. Deep dish. She declines because adult, right? Bingo. Cubby gummy, I don't know how I ever used to put up with you. Figures. And speaking of figures, one look into Sunny's killer bod and Gusto's imagination starts up blowing. Sunny may have the body of an adult, but she still has the attention span of a kid. I got a feeling Gruffy's not gonna like what he sees on the internet. Or the people who populate it. I am hilarious and you will quote everything I say. And oh look, Sunny's struggling to hold a single pose. You think you're tired? I didn't realize posing was such hard work. So who about giving this babe and board a break? Hey, I know that guy. Or at least, that guy's cousin. Well, just follow your nose. To the very orange, lemon, cherry, and lime loops. My father still has AIDS. I don't 
think I can hold this pose anymore. Sunny topples over in a humiliating fashion, and the two pack up and head home for the night. Hey, hey, wouldn't want my favorite model getting bags under her eyes. The way I'm feeling, I'll probably get bags under the bag. Is his sculpture really relevant at all? The next morning, Gusto comes to pick up Sunny as the poor girl struggles to get out of bed. And for good reason. Go! <gasps> oh, it's relevant! Oh no! The gummies realize what's going down and head over to Lady Bane. I'm coming too! It's my hair! No, Sonny, you're too old. Too old? Oh, fooey. Quoth every congressman when they finally establish an age limit for Congress. Shut up and leave some jokes for me, pal. I'm still the star here. Lady Bane reunites with her two witch friends, gets showered in the usual compliments, and the gummies promptly sneak into the castle. Personally, I do agree with the witches. She does look even younger. Her face is more well-rounded, she looks more doe-eyed, like your basic Disney princess, and there's more pronunciation in her breasts. What? Her melons! Her totos! Her yabos! You know what I find depressing? We're both grown-ass men, and we both find ourselves saying... Yabos! And I can legit say that I've been around the internet long enough to wonder why I haven't killed myself yet. Naturally, the other gummies get caught, which ultimately leaves Sunny to step in and save the day. Because she's the main focus of this episode. Sunny! Your hair's over there! Which one of you nasty little creatures dared disturb my things? Oh, so it's you! Sunny proves to still be nimble in her old age, and then promptly outwits Lady Vane with the exact same prank that she pulled on Cubby. Looks big and green and has 12 legs. I don't know. I don't know either. But it's on your shoulder. <gasps> Get it off me! Immediately! <gasps> you little vixen! You tricked me! And it was my treat! And thus, Lady Bane ages to dust, because the show is about to end. Of course, they never really show it, because shut up. But yeah, they had this rule in place back in the day. Once a Disney tune hits 65 episodes, it's over. In fact, it was a big deal for Disney fans when Gargoyles and later Kim Possible got another order beyond 65 episodes. Along with Phineas and Ferb, the latter of which kept on going. To this day, I might add. <laughs> Bottom line, judging from this episode and how it handles its Aesop, you can obviously tell that it's a really great show. I highly recommend looking for it wherever you can yesterday. But of course, knowing Disney and its Betamax department, it's not gonna be easy. You might have to go bargain bin diving in sites such as eBay. But I assure you, it is a show worth watching. But thank you for watching, and I suppose you want me to review something shitty now, don't you? Will the mob choose something for Thinkos to review that's not Mr. Meaty? Oh, motherfucker! I guess not! What obscene horrors await the Cosby Comets? Tune in next week to our next set of episodes!